Aloha and welcome. I'm Peter Rawsig. I'm your host um, for this program, Hawaii's Volunteer Champions, in which we talk to a few of the many exemplary volunteers in Hawaii. Uh, and basically, we want to find out what they do and why they do it. Why do people give up probably their two most precious resources, their time and their effort, to help some cause or some organization? And we also want to find out about the organization. So today, we're going to visit with folks from the Waikiki Aquarium. Uh, and uh, our guests are Chris Patton, who is a volunteer, and Jessica Paros, who is the volunteer coordinator, uh, which coordinating volunteers is more difficult than you probably realize. So uh, we'll just jump right in. Chris, welcome to the program. Um, tell me what you do at the Waikiki Aquarium. Tell me why you do it. Hey, well, I volunteer in two programs. One is the, which I am. Um, work at least once a week, sometimes two times a week, and that is showing folks, especially children, um, the the fish that are in our outside um, exhibit, which is Edge of the Reef, and we have a fantastic um, idea that I think came from the volunteer office, is when the pandemic came and we were shut down for so long, um, we when we came back, we didn't have the touch pool anymore. And we used to let the kids touch um, the hermit crabs and the sea urchins. And that was a really fun part of that job. And so instead, couldn't go back to that. We still haven't come back to that. Uh, we have a scavenger hunt and we have a laminated two-sided uh, uh, eight fish. If they can find those fish, they get a Hawaii sticker, which I have somewhere here. Um, and... And um, so that's really fun. The other job I do, which is during the school year, is the docent program, which is with the folks and um, they from kindergarten through fifth grade. And we invite teachers to sign up and um, they will bring their kids. And there's usually a classroom anywhere from 24 to 30 kids. And they have then we are sure they have enough chaperones. And our uh, coordinator of that, Dean Spencer, age-appropriate lecture. It's not a lecture. It's a fun interactive time. And that change that changes which, with each uh, year, so the kindergarten through fifth grade. And then for the last 45 minutes, we as docents, and there's usually five or six of us, um, take to six children and chaperone around the aquarium exhibits. And we have been, uh, the training is, is is very thorough, and we get to tell them things about it. We answer their questions and interact that way. So those are my two jobs. Where I got into this, because after I um, retired, I was um, looking for something that would involve my, I taught biology in high school for 10 years, and then, um, then I actually went to law school and was an attorney for 26 years, but anyway, I wanted to get back to my biology background, and um, I looked it up on the web, and there was the, you know, do you want to volunteer at the aquarium? So I immediately um, went to that source because I thought this would be perfect, and it really has been. I've been, I started working in 2019, uh, at, you know, through 20, and when we closed for a little while, and then came back immediately when we opened again. Wow, that's that's impressive. I didn't know we had lawyers out there at the edge of the reef. So, uh, but that's great. So you've been uh, volunteer at the aquarium for about four years, all. Uh, yeah, with right in that one. Yeah, well, right. Where everybody, we sort of lost that time. We don't know where it went. So, Chessa, tell us. Uh, I, I uh, Chris doesn't seem to shy but uh, I bet, I'm guessing she hasn't really told us the whole story of how much she helps the aquarium uh, well, well tell us a little more about uh, how valuable somebody like that is absolutely um so Chris like she said she's an educator volunteer at edge of the reef um, and also a docent volunteer um, so while she's an educator at edge of the reef she's really able to make that connection with so many of our visitors um, and educate them. So, you know, a lot of times people are coming from all over and they're also all ages, right? So a lot of times it's the first time people are seeing a lot of these animals um, 
maybe it's the first time they saw Okungu. Um, you can teach them more about, you know, Hawaii, um, more about our reefs, the roles on the reefs, and the importance of all these animals. Um, so she's able to make that connection. And hopefully after the visitors come, they can take this, what they've learned, um, outside of the aquarium, right? And hopefully that makes an impact on how they interact with our ocean and all of the animals um, that we have. Uh, hopefully they learn that coral is an animal, not to step on it, right? When they're out on the reef. Right. <laughs> um, and as a docent, you know, we get so many school groups that come in. And like she said, we have kindergarten up until uh, fifth grade. And being able to actually tour around these groups you know, it takes a quite a bit of training and quite a bit of knowledge. So Chris has put in so much time and effort to learn more about um, all of our exhibits and actually teach this to so many of our kiki on the island, which is so important, right? To instill um, an ethic of conservation and the importance of all these animals at a young age. It's really, really impressive. And we're so thankful for Chris because, like she said, she volunteers in two really important not you know of course all of our volunteers are important um some are more important than others <laughs> that's for sure but she has always been an amazing volunteer and um also just a great positive energy and bringing that to all of the cakey come in and the visitors it's really really important. so thank you chris for everything Thank you. So. Oh, that's that's great. How many volunteers uh, to give any given moment? How about how many volunteers does the aquarium have? Altogether, we have around two hundred volunteers, but this is spread up in like all of our different programs, and we have different um, volunteer opportunities in almost all of our departments. Um, so, on a given day, I would say we would have. I would say maybe around 10 volunteers. If it's a docent day, of course, we have more. Um, but yeah. Okay. Chris, how many hours a week would you say you put into the aquarium on average? On average, it's probably, well, it's different during the summer. In the summer, it's about four hours, edge of the reef. And then during the school year, that program is four hours a week itself. Uh, and then I also do the edge of the reef, so that's six hours. So about six hours during the school year. So again, I, I have to ask this question. You are giving up a very precious resource, the uh, the time, and you're putting a lot of effort and work into it. Uh, what are you getting out of this? Why why would you uh, you do this kind of stuff? Oh my gosh. Um, well, I love tea. I did that for uh, many years. And I love kids. I have two granddaughters, ages six and three. And uh, I love teaching them all about nature and biology. And my six-year-old, who's been to the aquarium about four times, um, they live on the mainland but come over to visit. Um, she, has, she loves animals herself. So it's been so fun to, to do that with my grandchildren. So getting to do it with elementary school kids and everyone who comes by Edge of the Reef, um, is just an extension of that, that I love to impart that kind of feeling of that nature's important, that conservation's important. And as Chessa said, especially with our monk CEO, um, Ho'olina, who had to go, when the pandemic came, he had to be shipped back over to um, a lab in Santa Cruz, which is actually where I'm from. And he hasn't come back yet. But when he was here, and even though he's not here, I take a time with the docent program and the edge of the reef to educate parents and the kids about the importance of our Hawaiian monk seals when there are so few of them. And this is the only place they are in the whole world. And that's and many people don't know that. And so it's, it's, it's very satisfying to see them ask questions and then hopefully they'll go home, tell their parents, and then they'll, they'll talk about it in school. And they will have the appreciation of nature, um, not only the marine world, but the whole world of nature and, um, and preserving it. All right. Tessa, I've got to ask you, since we got into the monk seal question, when is he coming back? Do not have a date. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you, uh, but I don't know myself. I know they are working on um, fixing up his exhibit for when he comes back. But I know we all do. 
Well, and then, you know, it's one of the primary attractions for visitors of the of the aquarium, very frankly. And, and uh, uh, people show up and, and frankly, I, I've been a volunteer there I, in the gift shop more recently. And people will, are always asking. Some people make a, a trip especially just to see the monk seal. And, and uh, so, yeah, I don't think I have to remind you of how important he is to people. But um, we'll, we'll look forward to him, him getting back into the into the swing of things there. Uh, so, Chris, how did you, you had a, bi a background in biology, obviously, but it was a few years ago. Uh, how did you prep? Uh, you know, the thing that terrifies me is that some little six-year-old is going to, would ask me a question, and I would have no idea what the answer was. And so how did you prep to become a, uh, a, a, a edge of the reef and, and a docent? Well, one, nobody knows everything. And um, so we often say, I don't know, either let's look it up right then. Sometimes I always have my phone with me. I always bring the books with me to Edge of the Reef. So often we can look things up uh, or tell them, um, go home, look it up, or talk with it, your teachers and your um, fellow students. When you get back, find out for me. And if you come back, let me know. So, that, so you just, every, nobody knows everything, although some of our, people that um, teach us know um, we have a very intensive, um, not intense hard, but intensive training program for the docents is more involved. Um, and the edge of the reef uh, is also there have night classes. They, I think, had one last night um, for the volunteers. And Mary and Dean um, are excellent teachers. So we have in-person uh, learning experiences at the aquarium. We then have a shadowing program that new volunteers will shadow a senior volunteer. And so we get to see how we do it and we, what, we, what we do. But also we get a big binder of uh, written materials. And uh, I still, I got that four years ago. I still reference it when I go back I check it you know up and then there's an online course also that you can always go back to and um, it's just an online goes through all the fish and the, everything so it's very intensive in that I mean I had my own back but like you say a long time ago and it wasn't in marine biology so right. much, but that was one of my section I but um, this is much more you know in, um, complicated relationships so, so i've learned so much even at this age um just by the materials that were given by the aquarium so that we feel comfortable in answering questions and always say i don't know and are you know let's find out but i can tell you were a high school teacher because the the standard high school teacher uh response when to a question is go look it up so uh i can <laughs> I can tell you have that 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 background, so uh, which is terrific. Uh, and just uh, the opportunity to learn new things is one of the things that I find, uh, you know, interesting and in, about volunteering. Uh, I, as I said, I volunteer. I have volunteered for about a year and a half in the gift shop, which, unlike the edge of the reefs, is air conditioned. So I'm uh, <laughs> very happy in there when I'm working uh, in there, uh, and you know seeing kids coming in and getting excited about nice nice if they occasionally pick up a book but mostly it's plush toys and uh, but there's still you there's still learning learning opportunities so uh just so let's talk a little bit more about the volunteer program uh you, you know the people don't often realize i think that the care and feeding the care and and, and uh you know help for volunteers is it's so important and frankly very difficult. I think you guys put in a lot of time and energy. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you do for the volunteers in appreciation for what they do. Sure. Um, well, of course, we want to show our appreciation to all of our volunteers. And I try to make it a point to make our volunteer program a whole program, right? Not just, hey, you come in, you volunteer, and you leave. Um, we try to make it a whole program where um, all of our volunteers eventually get to meet all of our other volunteers in different programs. Um, of course, we provide the best snack, but just saying. <laughs> Karen feeding, Karen feeding. Karen feeding, yep. Always have good snacks in the office and coffee and tea, of course. 
Um, but other than that, on the day to day of me, you know, that's my favorite part of this job is also just talking with our volunteers, um, seeing how they're doing um, and seeing them every time when they come in every week. Um, but in addition to that, we do have um, different ways of how we show appreciation to our volunteers. We do have two appreciation events every year. So usually in the holiday time around December, we'll have our holiday appreciation. This one is more of a relaxed appreciation, I will say. You know, we do have um, a little costume contest where people can come in wearing like ugly sweaters. I don't know if you guys remember. Let's see my favorite one. Remember Ben came as the Grinch one year. <laughs> oh. um, I think, what's her name? Anna, she came in as Mrs. Claus. I, of course, have my festive attire for holiday time as well. Um, but this one, we provide dinner and all of the volunteers, they also can bring a plus one. So I get to finally meet spouses and kids and all the people I've been hearing about for the past year, which is always great. Um, and then all the volunteers can also bring poopoos and desserts, which is fun. We have a couple of games out on the lawn, just as like a nice social uh, time for the volunteers. That's in holiday time. And then in April, we or April, sometimes March, sometimes May, basically our spring appreciation. We have this, um, this one's more of like a little bit of a fancier appreciation. We usually have it at one of the hotels in town. Um, we do have, <laughs> we do have a pinning ceremony. Um, so if you reach a certain amount of years of service, you do get recognized um, in front of all of the other volunteers coming to the appreciation event. So if you hit three, five, seven, and 10, and then going forward those ones as well, you do get a separate years of appreciation. It's fun because people start to collect them over the years that they've been volunteering. I know some people like to wear the lanyards or wearing all their pins and showing how many years they've been volunteering for. Um, you also get to meet some of the volunteers who've been here for, you know, 30 plus years and have been doing it for as long as they've been on island for. <laughs> yeah, that that's one of the things that amazed me. I was fortunate to attend uh, one of those, a lovely, a lovely event with a, a lovely lunch at a very nice hotel. It was really nice. Uh, but the thing that amazed me was there were people there who had been, have stuck with the aquarium for uh Years and years, when you, there was, what's the longest uh, uh, person that in your memory or in your experience of the longest volunteer? In the past, I think it hit up to like 42 years. Uh, and right now, I can't remember. I know it's, I know the person. <laughs> I think they hit, I want to say almost 40, this person who's. Wow. She needs to volunteer at Edge of the Reef. She right now does gift shop as well. Uh, she's still coming in. I'm going to see her next week. Great. <laughs> Terrific. Chris, uh, do, do you kind of uh, recruit among your friends? Do you and try to get other people to become volunteers? Or is this just kind of something that you do uh, for yourself? Well, I definitely talk about it a lot. <laughs> so so um, actually, I... I learned that a friend of ours on the island who had an her mother who is in her 90s has a friend who's in her late 80s also volunteered as a docent so i got to connect with her and um we talk about it i i've tried with other people and say and i certainly people who come by the reef and that um are are in the docent program and that if the kids or the parents are there for chaperoning and at the edge of the reef and so I often, especially if the kids are excited, I say, hey, when you grow up, you can volunteer here. You can get a job here. Wouldn't you be cool? And so uh, I do it more than that, more like that. I have talked about it to my friends. I don't go out and actually say, well, I say, if you need it, if you want something to do, come do this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. And it, you've been doing this for, for some years now, and you've been involved with a couple of different programs. Uh, is there something you would change? Is there something you think uh, could be improved? Uh, I, I'm sure Chester wouldn't mind if you, uh, you know, if, if the treats aren't really up to your uh, stand. <laughs> but, I got, yeah, go ahead. I was going to mention, she said coffee and tea and treats and snacks. And I don't know, Chester <laughs> that brings those in, but they are amazing. We get cookies and candy and 
uh, other more sometimes more helpful things but it's always great to <laughs> take a little break or when you're done especially like you say um peter edge of the reef can be hot and uh you always have to have your water bottle and uh, come in to the air-conditioned volunteer center is very uh a nice and so you just you um, wanted and uh, appreciated so much when you go in there. Chessa always has a smile for you. And it's talking. We, she and I, um, know each other's um, aunt, our nieces and nephews, and she knows my grandchildren. Yeah. We share pictures, and and it's it's really a wonderful place to work. And especially in the docent program, um, Dean um, assigns to one day a week, so you get to and they're the same people. And so there's about who is Dean? Who is Dean now? Okay, he's the center. He's the I don't we call him coordinator of the school program, yeah. the school support uh, the school yeah. coordinator. And um and so you get to know those people, and they you become friends with them, and it's just been wonderful. All right. So you you don't have any you don't have any complaints you want to share with us? I do not have any complaints. I <laughs> love it. I love. It. It it is. It's what, in my experience, it's one of the best programs on uh, in Hawaii in terms of the care and feeding of the volunteers, the opportunities that are presented. The people are fantastic. Uh, just uh, Matt, who runs the gift shop, are the people I've had the most direct contact with lately. Uh, just uh, tell us, so we know that you can do docent. We know you can do Edge of the Reefs. We know you can work in the gift shop. Are there other... Uh, classes of opportunities uh, that you would mention? Um, yeah, we also have our aquarium activators. I know it's a funny name, but that basically is our craft table. Um, so if you're more of like a crafty person and like doing that with the different kids, um, it's a good opportunity for you. We also do have volunteers that help us in our live exhibits department. These are the volunteers that work behind the scenes and help take care of the exhibits. Um, this so one, you could actually be in in the back and and helping with the the care and feeding of the of the marine animals. Is that right? Yep, you can. Um, this one I will say is definitely one of the most highly sought after opportunities. You do mm -hmm. also have to have a previous experience with fish and um, vertebrate, but um, we do definitely always appreciate our live exhibits volunteers. They help us um, run all of our different exhibits and help clean these ones. Definitely a hard job, so we're appreciative of those volunteers. Um, the wait list for this volunteer opportunity is typically around a year, so we do have quite a bit of people looking to help back there, so that one's always a good opportunity. Um, and then we do have special events. These special events, now you do have to be in another program to also do special events, but we have tons of special events throughout the year, like our summer concert series, um, it's a Makai, which is our Earth Day, and just a lot of day events well um and then these are all typically like reoccurring volunteer like once a week or um, a couple times a month but we do also have our beach cleanup program uh, i was going to ask you about that everything not ever not all the activities are right inside the aquarium you guys go out and and how do you pick where do you how do you decide where you're going to clean up <laughs> um well it does change every time we do it so majority of our beach cleanups happen between the months of February up until September. Um, we have around six to eight cleanups every year. So this is actually the one volunteer opportunity that you don't have to be like a reoccurring weekly volunteer. This one is open to the public. Um, you can also be under 18, which our normal volunteer program, you have to be 18 and older. Um, if you're under 18, of course, you just have to be with um, an adult. This is sure. you. And you guys go out, what what happens? You, you Somebody picks a beach uh, in Waikiki or somewhere else, and you guys go out and, and clean it up. Is that, is that right? Yep. So a lot of times we'll do them at the aquarium, and we'll clean up the beaches and parks surrounding the aquarium. So Waikiki, um, Waikiki, even though we you know have a bunch of trash cans lying around, we do have quite a bit of trash on our beaches and parks. If you look around, it gets there, with, especially on windy days. There's quite a bit. Um, maybe after picnics or parties on the beach, there's a lot of trash there. So we'll do them sometimes around the aquarium, but we also do go to other beaches. Um, our last one, we did go to Sherwood Beach, 
um, did a lot of microplastic sifting and the volunteers were able to do microplastics and also clean up just the park. So a lot of the bigger um, debris as well. Um, before that, we also went to Ala Moana Beach Park. That one as well was very filled with trash. <laughs> yeah, very well. They're very heavily used. And, and as you say, sometimes even when you put stuff into the bins, uh, the wind will uh, take a, take them out again. It's you know not entirely just people being being slobs. It's uh, the fact is that the winds and, and the weather will spread some of the stuff around. But these are very heavily used Waikiki, of course. Uh, Ala Moana Beach Park is probably the heaviest used, uh, most heavily used beach because it's everybody in Makiki and all that area get down there. So uh, have you ever, uh, Chris, have you gone on any of these? Uh, plane uh, yeah, I have not. Um, we, during a lot of them that are in, like she said, it's um, Kabiolani Park and the beaches around the aquarium, they're also usually uh, um, also going on like our, birthday celebrations every year so i'm usually working inside the aquarium but yeah. um you would have not you yeah, gone down there but i do see. enough i'll i'll forgive you for not going on the beach camp. <laughs> so that's that that's great um Chessa, how does somebody become a volunteer um they can apply online so they'll head to our website waikikiaquarium.org and they'll go on the volunteer page and they can actually see all of the different volunteer opportunities that we have, uh, the different requirements as well. And they apply online um, after they submit their documents, with the, which is just the background check um, and TV clearance. And especially they have to be over 18. Um, then we'll set up a meet and greet where me and you will actually go and tour around the aquarium, talk a bit more about our volunteer program. Um, and then whichever volunteer program or programs that they choose. I'll explain more for the next steps for that. All right. So start online and kind of move up from there. The, uh, don't just show up one day. Start by going to the website and seeing, getting the basic information and, and then and signing up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We're coming to the end of our, of our half hour. It always flies by for me. Uh, Chris, any last words that you want to uh, uh share with people and well i mostly want to say that if you're looking for a very satisfying very uh, important volunteer expression or uh, time so that you want to experience do it just go in make your application meet chessa and i'm sure you'll love it all right thank you chessa any last words we've got about a half a minute here um, nothing but thank you both for being amazing volunteers and if you're interested in volunteering, um, it doesn't hurt to submit an application just to learn more. All right. Thank you so much, both of you, Chris and Chessa, uh, from the White Key Aquarium, Chris Patton, a volunteer, Chessa, uh, Caparos, who is, a uh, an exemplary volunteer coordinator. Uh, thank you very much for, for being here and, um, uh, we're always looking for new organizations or new volunteers. So if you're watching and you have a suggestion, send it to Hawaii's Volunteer Champions at gmail.com. And we're going to leave you with a thought uh, about um, volunteering, as we always do at the end of these shows. Just a moment to reflect on, on the, the value, the incredible value. Uh, so many organizations would come grinding to a halt if it were not for the volunteers give their most valuable resources to support them. So thank you so much. Uh, we'll be back in a couple of weeks. And um, uh, thank you to my two regular viewers and anybody else who wandered in. Uh, uh, thank you to uh, Chessa and, and Chris and Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.